Hey guys, it's Mrs. Applegarth again. Um, I'm going to be taking you through chapter three, section one. So we put it together and say three point one. It's lines and angles. I do want you to write down all these definitions so they are officially highlighted. So you officially will be writing them down. Um, we are going to talk about parallel lines. They are coplanar lines, so they live on the same plane that don't intersect. And I got this little box right here so that you guys can see um, what I mean by that. So um, if we are looking at our reference line right here, a parallel line has to be on, you see this plane right here, the, it's kind of like I call it the right hand side of the box. And so it has to live here and it has to be parallel so it can't intersect. So the only line possible is this guy up here. So these are parallel lines. Skew lines are um, non coplanar lines that don't intersect. So it doesn't have to live on this plane, but yet if I follow each one, from um, infinity and beyond, um, they are not going to cross. So if you look at this green line L here, I don't even have to draw it, it's already there. He is going to go on and on forever in this direction, and he's never going to touch this reference line down here. Uh, parallel planes, it's the whole sheet of paper that goes on and on forever. So it's like this blue guy down here and this purple guy up here. They are planes that they're like two sheets of paper that sit apart from each other and they never intersect. And then a transversal, let me show you a transversal. If I am looking at, um, let me highlight. If I'm looking at two lines, this line here and this line right here, and I just draw a straight, draw a line from one to the next, um, this line that cuts the two other lines is called a transversal, a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines. All right, I do want you for um, example one to go ahead and write it all down. So um, this will be fun because you guys get to draw a box. So I'm going to walk you through the process for drawing a box. So the first step is to draw, and in this case, it's going to be like a square. If you don't get it all the way square, that's not a deal breaker. So draw your square, and then you're going to draw a smaller line that kind of chills off to the um, right. So you're going to start at this corner A, and just kind of to the right, slanted, draw a line. You're going to do that same line kind of similar width. If you don't get it exactly, it's okay. You won't be sad. Um, and then one down here. So you have your square and then three choo, 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 lines. Now all we're going to do is we're going to play connect the dots from here to here, from here to here. Da, 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 da. That's all. Now what if you want to get fancy schmancy in drawing when we have lines that are living behind a drawing, but so they are called hidden lines, um, we actually put them in um, dashed. So these lines back here are dashed and they're hidden, but they still exist. And they're still a part of our box. You can put in these dashed lines. That way you know where F is. It's in this corner right here. And you know where, what's going on with this line back here. So just put in some dashed lines to make your box three dimensional. What, what? Okay. And then um, go ahead and label your box A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. 
All right, we're going to answer these questions. We're going to find a line that is parallel to AB. So let's go ahead and highlight AB for us. Oops, let's go ahead and highlight M in pink so that whoop, we can see them because I've already done the green. Okay, so AB is right here. We want to find somebody parallel to him. Remember, parallel are coplanar lines that don't intersect. There are several options. Like we could say EF. We could say GH, we could say CD, and in fact, we are going to stick with CD. All right, uh, the next item we're going to look at is a line. Find something, a line perpendicular to AB that contains D. So once again, we're going AB. Let me erase the other shenanigans. We're going to clean this up for you. Okay, so we're on AB. He's, he's being highlighted. We want something perpendicular, and remember that is 90 degrees. And let's see where D is living right now. He is this corner right here. So the only line that goes through D and goes through AB is the line AD. And from the top, you can see that he is perpendicular. So we say line AD. Now, next, we want to find a line that is skew to AB and contains D. So I'm going to clean this up for you a little bit. Okay, so it's skew to AB and contains D. Again, D lives right here on this corner. So we want skew, so he can't cross, cannot cross AB. So it, and it can't be parallel, like CD is parallel. So it's not that one. And it's not all the ones, other ones we talked about that are parallel to AB. So it has to be, has to be a line that goes sideways through. So here's our options. We have ED. This one is skew. We have DH. Oh, this one up and down. And we have DG. All those are lines that um, are skewed to AB and contain D. Don't forget to put the little arrows on top. It indicates that you're talking about the line that goes on forever and not just the line segment. Oh, I gave, you the, gave it away. Name the planes that contain D. Where is those? Uh, and appear to be parallel to A, B, E. A, B, E. Okay, let's, um, let me get, let me get a little crayon. I'll fill that in for you. Let's go green. So A, B, E is this left-hand side. So if it's a box, it was like, it's this side. So it has to be parallel. Well, this one that's shaded, it's the right-hand side of our little box. He appears to be parallel. Let's see what we're going to call him. We're going to call him D, C, H. Remember, we just need two points on the plane. All right, next we are going to talk about some postulates. Okay, we are going to first talk about the parallel posture. Let me remember when I highlight it. Oh, this is pink. Okay, so when I highlight it, that means I want you to write it down. Don't forget to write down all the answers. I will be looking for that in your notes when you turn them in. Um, okay, so we're going to look at the parallel postulate. And a postulate is something we accept as true. Um, if there is a line and a point not on the line, just like this scenario, then there is exactly one line through the point parallel to the given line. But let's take a peek. So if I were just drawing a line parallel to this line down here, um, it has to also go through this point. Well, that locks that parallel line 
right into this position. So there is no other line that is both parallel and goes through this point. There's only one in the universe. All right, the same is true when we get perpendicular with it. So if you see that this part is the same, if there is a line and a point not on the line, this is a conditional statement like from chapter two, um, then there is exactly one line through the point perpendicular to the given line. Okay, so we have this blue line here and we have this point chilling above here. There is only one line because this point locks it into place. There is only one line that will go through that point and be perpendicular to our original line. Okay, easy peasy. We are going to leave these chill here for a minute and um, move along. So if you're like, oh, yeah, okay, this is just words and it's nonsense, I don't get it. It's okay. Um, just let them chill. We'll come back to them, I promise. Okay, um, so we, this is my this is my favorite part. Um, so we are going to have two lines. They don't have to be parallel. They're typically going to be parallel in our lives, but this demonstration, they don't have to be parallel. They're going to have a transversal that cuts through both of them. Okay, and um, so I want you guys to do that. I want you to label angles one, two, three, four five, six, seven, and eight. So you guys are writing this down. Um, go ahead and call this the transversal. I put a line, a little arrowy line to it so that it doesn't get mixed up with um, the rest of it. And I want to take you through a little demonstration. Okay, I love me a good hamburger. I love it on the barbecue. And um, I am a have to have cheese on your hamburger kind of girl. Um, this scenario is that I'm going to explain to you is like a hamburger. So if you are the exterior of the hamburger, like the top and the bottom, you are in the bun zone. So like one and two are exterior angles. They're like the bun of the hamburger. Seven and eight are also on the exterior. They're like my lower bun. Um, and then inside is the meat. So let me get my pen. I, I'll draw this better with the pen. So um, if you look, we what this makes is like a little hamburger. So here is the bottom of the hamburger. Here's the top of the hamburger. So if you are like me and everything in your life is related back to food, this is going to be totally easy. Okay, I'm going to erase the markings on my angles because I'm going to mark them up different. Okay, so now we're going to call different angles different things. So the first thing I'm going to do is call out corresponding angles. These are angles that's considered the same position. So angle two and angle six are corresponding angles. And let's see with some highlights what that'll look like. So I'm going to yellow highlight angle two and angle six. Two and six. They are in the same position. They're both on the right, and they're both above their, um, their lines. So they're both on the right, and they're both above the line. Now, one is an interior, one's an exterior, but corresponding angles doesn't care if you're meat or buns. They just care about your position. Are you on the right side? And then are you above your little um, non-transversal line? Uh, let's look at three and seven three and seven, those guys are on the left side and they are below their non-transversal line. So those are corresponding angles. Let's take a peek at one and five. I wanted them to be blue. blue. So one and five, those ones are on the left, but they are above their non-transversal lines. All right, and lastly, we have four and eight. Four, eight. Four and eight are on the right-hand side of the transversal, and they are both below their non-transversal lines. Okay, 
So now here's where our hamburger comes into place. If I'm telling you alternate exterior angles, I'm gonna tell you you're on opposite sides, one's on the left, one's on the right of the transversal. And then um, they are in the bun section. If you're exterior, you're a bun. So we have to look at, mix and room here. So alternate exterior angles, let's take a peek at which ones that this applies to. So one and eight. So one is on the left-hand side of the transversal. Eight is on the right, and they're both in the bun section. So they're an exterior angle. All right, let's look at two and seven. Here's seven here, here's two here. So seven is on the left side, two is on the right, and they are both in the bone section. So they're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're bones. Okay, let me clear that off. It's making me hungry for dinner in, in my um, recording time. Uh, that is what it is right now, it's dinner time. Um, and just for the record, our uh, secret phrase is hamburger. That's our secret phrase for this lesson. Okay, alternate interior angles. Um, let's make this, let's zoom this out a little bit. Um, alternate interior angles, they're opposite sides of the transversal, so one's on the left, one's on the right, and they live in the meat section of the hamburger. So let's find the meaty meat. So three and six are gonna be green. Three is on the left, six is on the right, and they're both on that inside of our hamburger. And let's look at four and five. Four is on the right, five is on the left, and those guys are also inside the hamburger. Okay, last one of our um, hamburger analogy. Uh, same side interior angles also called a consecutive interior angles. Just in case you get out there and you're at a math party and you um, somebody's calling it consecutive interior, you guys know, oh, that's same side interior. Okay, so we're on the same side of the transversal, so we're either on the right-hand side, both of them, or both of them are on the left, and it's in the meat section. So angle three and angle five, those are same side interior. So let's see where these are, three and five. Now both of them are on the left-hand side and they're in this meat section. Okay, and angles four and six are on the right-hand side in the meat section. Woot woot. That is awesome. Okay. Boop. Is that it? Oh my gosh, that is it! Okay, you guys are, have all the information you need to now go do the practice problems from the lesson 3.1. All right, y'all have an amazing day. We'll talk to you soon.